For this project, I went to the Getty Center as it was the closest museum to me and contained a good selection of paintings from the 19th and 20th century. As I entered the West Pavilion of the center, I admired around and eventually entered a room where an 8-foot tall and 14-foot wide painting towered over me. James and Soar's Christ's Entry into Brussels in 1889 captivated me with its grand scale, chaoticness, and politically charged motifs. James and Soar was a Belgian painter known for his macabre style of art which explored both autobiographical and social themes through thickly painted patches of color and grotesque caricatures. Christ's entry into Brussels in 1889 depicts a sea of people, some wearing masks, accompanied by signs and banners, which makes the viewer feel like they are about to be trampled as the foreground of people looks like they are about to spill out of the painting. The style of painting and techniques used by Insor are considered as aggressive as its subjects. The paint strokes are heavy and rough, giving the painting texture, almost as if it was a coloring book colored with waxy crayons. The painting uses primary colors where the dominant color of red is accompanied by pockets of green and blue and yellow stick out ever so often. We see a lack of light and shading in this piece, which creates a flatness and poster-like effect. But the colors are more vibrant in the foreground and turn lighter as our eyes move towards the background with less details, creating a triangular shape where we are met with a gold haloed figure of Christ. However, even though Christ is in the middle of the painting and our focus as viewers is on him, he is ignored by the people that are in the painting. Another religious figure is the bishop in the foreground, who is leading this crowd but looks as though he is about to be trampled. We also see on the right side of the painting the city's mayor, dressed in blue with a sash on a stage away from the crowd, and in Sor himself makes an appearance as a yellow figure with a tall red hat on the left of the painting. Although this piece has religious iconography, it is an unconventional take on Christ and him being the savior of humanity, and it instead mocks humanity along with its civic and religious beliefs. The red banner, which expands across the top of the painting, translates to Long Live the Social Revolution, which alludes to the socialist movements in Brussels at the time, where Ensor gained inspiration from them to produce this piece. It is also important to keep in mind that, at this time, Christ was significant in socialism, as he was believed to be a social reformer who had the power to help the impoverished masses. And Ensor was known to be a supporter of liberal social reform and highly criticized conservative institutions in Belgium. However, this piece does not clearly support or refute any political positions at the time, but instead can be viewed as criticism of humanity and the beliefs they hold as a whole. We can also see it as criticism on the art world. On the top left, under the banner, we see a figure throwing up on the Roman numeral 20 emblem. In his art career, Ensor was very expressive with his depictions of Christ, and although he was considered a leader in the Belgian avant-garde movement, a lot of his works were not accepted by the Less 20, which was a society he helped to create. His anger and resentment is evident in a lot of his works, and especially in this one, where the figure is throwing up on the emblem, which is his way of taking a jab at the art world. Continuing my visit in the West Wing, I moved upstairs to the Impressionist section. It was actually really cool seeing a lot of the artists and pieces we have learned about in class, up close and in person, and it's here where I navigated my way through this crowded section in search of my next piece. I passed by the line and chaos of people crowding to get a picture with Vincent van Gogh's irises, which is a beautiful piece, but I was searching for something different. I then came across the Rue Mosnier with Flags, 1878, by Edward Manet. Manet was a French painter who is known as the father of modern art, 
because he broke conventions of academic art traditions and conventional painting categories, where he instead focused on real-world subjects. And although he did not want to associate with the Impressionists, he established and inspired the movement. This piece depicts Rue Mosnier in Paris on the French holiday Fête de la Paix, Celebration of Peace, which commemorated the recent Exposition Universelle, Celebrating Luxury and Prosperity. And I'm sorry for butchering those pr that pronunciation. This day also marked France's recovery from the disastrous Franco-Prussian War of 1870 to 1871 and the bloody, divisive Paris Commune that followed. Impressionism was about capturing the light and atmosphere of a landscape in the way the artist saw in real time, so Manet created this piece out of his second floor apartment window on this day. We see the use of light brush strokes, which depict new buildings on the right side of the street, covered with contrasting French flags alongside carriages with nicely dressed people. This light blue and beige color palette contrasts against the man in the left foreground with one leg on crutches, near a fence where on the other side is rubbled, and the top of a head of a worker holding the ladder. Our eyes follow the street and the use of shadows help with the depth and the continuation of new infrastructure and the flags that hang alongside them. As light and as beautiful as the painting is, Manet creates a distinction in French society and the impact of industrialization. In the celebration of prosperity and peace, he highlights the forgotten people that made this possible. The man on the crutches is presumed to be a veteran or an impoverished person, and his figure highly contrasts against the newly developed and patriotic scene we see in the streets. The man is literally left in the dust as he is next to a fence of rubble. Manet is making a statement on the negative effects of industrialization and war where his sensitivity to the associated costs and sacrifices tempered his optimistic view of national pride and newfound prosperity. I really enjoyed doing this project, so thank you for watching.